Let's go ahead and start with the OJ Simpson story. I was not expecting to hear this news today. Uh, kind of came out of nowhere, to be quite honest with you. I kind of had forgotten about OJ Simpson. You know, sometimes you forget about people and then something happens like, oh, yeah, I remember now. But OJ Simpson apparently did uh, pass away today. Apparently he was battling uh, cancer. I was not aware of that. Again, I don't think all of you were aware of that either, uh, but that has been the big breaking story today. So I do want to go ahead and get started with that. Now, when it comes to the OJ Simpson, I was about to say the OJ Simpson case, but when it comes to OJ Simpson, some people remember OJ Simpson as a professional football player. Some of you may have remembered him from the Naked Gun movies. And then I think all of us, though, do remember him from the OJ Simpson trial. Right. That was like the trial of of, of the, the 90s. And, and I remember it was on national television, you know, and I think a lot of people who were born after that time, they just don't know what that experience was like. It was like you would get home from school every day and the O.J. Simpson trial uh, was on national television. It was watched, you know, all over the United States. Let's go ahead and dive into this story. Uh, and I have some things to say here about uh, the death of O.J. Simpson. Let's chime in. O.J. Simpson, the former NFL star who was found not guilty of the double murder of his ex-wife and her friend in 1995 in one of the most notorious trials in modern history, has died at age 76. His family announcing this news on the platform formerly known as Twitter, writing, quote, that O.J. had succumbed to his battle with cancer. I want to go right to MSNBC's Katie Turr, who is joining us on the phone. And, and Katie, you have a, a family connection to the coverage, the news coverage during uh, the O.J. Simpson uh, case involving his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson. Give me your thoughts on this news and what's going through your mind. Listen, anybody who lived in the in Los Angeles in the 80s and 90s and was old enough to remember anything about that time has a connection to O.J. Simpson. It's hard to overstate the impact that O.J. had on the city of Los Angeles from the time he was in college when he was a Heisman winner at USC. He was a superstar football player. And then he was a superstar NFL player that was, you know, in commercials. He was ubiquitous on cereal boxes everywhere. And then a Hollywood actor. The guy was well known, and so was his high profile relationship with Nicole Brown Simpson, which was also highly volatile. And that ended in the horrific, truly horrific stabbing death of both her and Ron Goldman at their house in their townhouse in Brentwood. This was just around the corner, down the street, Anna, uh, from my middle school. And the middle school was overrun with cops and road blockages and then tourists who were trying to get a glimpse, a, a macabre glimpse of the crime scene. OJ's house was just up the hill from us. There were helicopters flying overhead all the time, including my parents' helicopter. They were news reporters in Los Angeles. Let's pause there for just a second. I want to chime in. And uh, one of the things I think a lot of people may remember was that infamous white Bronco uh, chase uh, down the highway. I still remember that until this day uh, where OJ Simpson was just, and he says, one of the things he said later on is that he was just driving, that he wasn't running away from the police or fleeing. But a lot of us do remember that. I remember seeing that on national television and I was thinking to myself like, OJ Simpson is on the run. What is happening? You know, what's going on? What's happening uh, here? Uh, I think we also need to remember in reference to the OJ Simpson trial, you have to remember that Kim Kardashian's father, Robert, uh, Robert Kardashian, was actually one of the lawyers that represented OJ Simpson. So a lot of people may, may not remember that. But one of the things you have to know is that they were friends with OJ and Nicole. So the Kardashians and the Simpsons were actually close. Like this is, you know, it's not like he just hired some lawyer and say, represent me. They were friends. So I often wondered sometimes like, you know, how did the Kardashians feel about this trial? Like after this happened, you know, it's just gotta be, it puts you in an awkward situation. And we know that OJ Simpson was found not guilty, but even after that trial, people still believed that OJ was guilty. OJ did some things that were really questionable. Like you don't write a book called if I did it, you know, things like that.
And there was also the fact that there was evidence of uh, physical abuse towards Nicole Simpson, where she had actually reported incidents to the police. But from what I read and understand, it seemed like the police were also friendly with OJ. So you think back to what could have been different, right? You just, you just really don't know. But I think that OJ's behavior is what made people question whether or not he really was innocent or not. OJ was immediately not a suspect, but he was definitely looked into, especially because he went missing. And there was a slow speed pursuit in Los Angeles looking for him. And my parents were able to find him. He was this really surreal moment where he was driven down the L.A. freeway in a, a white Bronco with his friend Al Cowling. The freeway was completely clear. The Los Angeles freeways are never cleared off. And there was this white Bronco leading a fleet of cop cars slowly behind him as Al Cowlings was on the phone with the cops. And I think then at, at one point, even a, a news broadcast saying that O.J. had a gun to his head and was going to kill himself. He had visited yeah. the, the grave site of Nicole Brown Simpson, and then he was going who knows where at that time. The whole city was, was glued to the television. It ended up stopping at his house. And from there, it was the trial of the, I would say it's a cliche, but it's true. The trial of the century were not only. Yeah, it was really the trial of the century. And one thing I want you guys to think about is like, imagine if we would have been able to see like the Epstein trial, like on national television every day when you got home from work or when you got home from school, like it was, it was all the news, like literally at that point in time. And, you know, I didn't grow up with OJ Simpson when he was a football player, but a lot of people did. And they were just like, the juice is on the loose. I remember those stories that the juice is running. I remember the infamous Time magazine cover uh, where there was actually there were two different magazines where there was a picture of OJ Simpson where the, the light was shining on his face. It was his mugshot. And then there was another uh, magazine where they actually had darkened his face to make him look more sinister. I remember that was controversial at that point in time. But one of the things I always wondered was what about the children? What about OJ Simpson's kids? And even after this trial was over, you know, it's not easy to tell someone that OJ Simpson is your dad, because like I said, a lot of people still believed that he was guilty. And I want to get into just how this trial actually divided the American people as well in just a second, because this is the only trial I remember uh, during my lifetime uh, that caused such uh, a sort of division. Only the city of Los Angeles and the country, but the world was tuned in to see what would happen to OJ. L.A. at the time was already deeply divided among, along racial lines. The riots, the L.A. riots it only happened a couple of years earlier. There were deep wounds in the city. I mean, still, you know, pockmarks that you could see from the damage the riots left behind in the city. And then this case with OJ comes along. And once again, it was it seemed to be racially divided whether he did it or whether he did not. We're going to touch on that part there. So, yes, remember, this was not too long after the L.A. riots, right? And the L.A. riots were in reference to uh, the Rodney King uh, trial. Remember that? So this actually carried over into the O.J. Simpson case because one of the things that Johnny Cochran, who was also one of O.J.'s attorneys, actually brought up is the fact that, oh, one of these, uh, you know, these police officers that investigated the, the scene were actually from Simi Valley. Now, just people that don't live in that area, that doesn't mean as much, but that was also where the police officers that beat Rodney King were from. So there are a lot of police officers that live in that area. So it painted a negative light on the police officer. There was also a history of racism among, uh, I think his name was, what's his name, Furman? Racism among Furman, who was one of the police officers that investigated the incident. And then remember what was really monumental about this trial was DNA. This was the first time that I remember that DNA evidence actually really was put into the spotlight during a, a trial. So it was a big deal because they were able to say, well, you know, the DNA didn't fit. The glove didn't fit. You must, you know, acquit. Remember that saying, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit, that kind of thing. But it was very much racially divided, meaning that during that time, a lot of white people in the United States 
were waiting for that decision and were hoping that OJ was going to be found guilty. A lot of white people thought he was guilty. A lot of black people thought he was innocent. And I still remember sitting in school and my teacher allowing us to listen to the verdict on the radio in class. Now, you probably wouldn't get away with doing that today, but my teacher did that. And I still remember in my dance class, it was divided. All of a sudden, all of us that got along before this trial, once that verdict was read, it was very much divided. All of the white girls in the dance class were very upset and all the black girls in the dance class were cheering and very happy. So it just goes to show you how this trial really divided the American people. And what was also interesting to me is that so many African-Americans were pleading for OJ. We were, a lot of us were, were hoping like, oh no, like he has to be innocent. You can't arrest him. And everybody, a lot of them cheered, right? A lot of black people cheered when OJ was found not guilty. What's interesting about that though, and it was something that I did not know at the time, as many, you know, as much as black Americans were cheering and rooting for OJ, when I looked back on OJ's history, OJ wasn't really cheering and rooting for us. OJ did not consider himself to be black. OJ referred to himself as I'm not black, I'm OJ. OJ didn't really want much to do with the black community. And apparently this wasn't a secret, but I just wasn't paying attention at that point in time. We'll get into some of the things that, that he said. So it's interesting. His home became such a tourist site that the cops had to block off the street that led to his home in Brentwood because people from around the world would come to see where he lived. It was something that changed the fabric of Los Angeles and certainly made an impact on anybody who grew up in that time. Yeah. Wow. Katie, you just laid out so much of the, the story and what people think about when they think of O.J. Simpson. For those who are just joining us, our breaking news right this hour is O.J. Simpson confirmed to have died at the age of 76. His family saying he succumbed to his battle with cancer. And joining us now by phone is MSNBC Entertainment contributor Chris Witherspoon. Uh, as we look at these iconic images from his trial, uh, Katie laid out how he had a had such a, a fall from grace having been an NFL football star. Your thoughts uh, learning about his death? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's shocking to hear that he died, but I keep thinking about, you know, that trial as Katie was kind of unpacking it and even the video, the viral video of the Bronco. But OJ really was as big as it gets before he, you know, the trial happened. He was in several films, several films. He was a bona fide movie. He really crossed over all types of racial lines. So that trial brought up issues that we really hadn't talked about in the mid 90s, like domestic violence, what happens when you're connected to a celebrity. Um, and I think that there are a lot of mixed feelings around that trial yeah. coming on the hills. Yeah, there were a lot of mixed feelings. And I think that, um, you know, it's hard to say this today because it, we're in a different time. It's 2024. We also have social media. Could you imagine what it would have been like during the O.J. Simpson trial if we had social media during that time? I mean, again, pretty much the trial of the century. But the point that he mentioned in reference to domestic violence, like people do have to understand that was not talked about as much during that time. You know, and this case kind of put a spotlight on that as well. But it was just really interesting just how this trial in particular divided Americans. Uh, I still remember seeing people on television where they showed a crowd of white people, a crowd of black people, and the crowd of black people would cheer when the verdict was read and the crowd of white people would be upset. I still remember seeing people crying, you know, on, on TV after this verdict was read. And this was interesting. This was something that was mentioned uh, during the Huffington Post about O.J. Simpson. It said O.J. Simpson didn't want to be associated with black America. Then he came to symbolize it. So it just goes to show you you know, how things changed, uh, because it says here, this part here, he overheard a white woman at the table saying, look, there's OJ sitting with all those ends, right? I remember in my naivete saying to OJ, gee, wow, 
that must have been terrible for you. And he said, no, it was great. Don't you understand? She knew I wasn't black. She saw me as OJ. OJ Made in America, a five-part documentary on the rise and fall of Simpson that premiered Saturday on ASB, ABC and continues on ESPN throughout the week, is filled with antidotes and sentiments similar to those stories and quotes that paint Simpson as a man who, at best, didn't want to be defined by factors beyond his control and, at worst, was a Black man who didn't empathize with less fortunate people who looked like him. This is one of the most infamous uh, statements, I think. We hear from former SWAT officer Pete, who recalls Simpson asking, what are all these ends doing in Brentwood after his famous car chase on June 17th, 1994? So it's really interesting when you dive into how OJ actually felt about his own people, considering that it was Black America that was cheering for OJ, pleading for OJ and rooting for OJ. Of course, after the trial, OJ did make some changes, right? He started to seek out more support from the black community. He had pretty much been pushed out of some of those elite cushy circles that he was once a part of before because people were like, I don't feel comfortable associating with OJ Simpson. And then that brings me to the question about the kids. You ever wonder what happened to OJ Simpson's kids? You ever wonder like, how was their life like after all this was said and done? They lost their mother. Their father was found not guilty, but people still said he was guilty. So it was like, how, how did that affect and impact their life? It makes you wonder. But OJ Simpson has passed away from cancer. So I did want to make sure I touched on that. And says, why did he get acquitted? Because the glove did not fit. Do you remember this, Anne? Actually, Anne, I don't know how I don't know how old you are, Anne, but that was the thing they were able to prove. Number one, DNA evidence. And number two, the glove that they actually had OJ Simpson try on didn't fit his hand. So they said that there was no way he could have done it. And they were saying that that was the glove that was used to commit the crime. And there was DNA evidence actually. I guess, gathered from that glove. So it was because of the glove. Marvin says, OJ just, OJ lost in his civil case. That is true. He did. Uh, Danny says, Nicole Brown's family took the kids. And thank you for this super chat, Nas. As far as the attention this trial received, it was similar to Johnny Depp's trial. Me and my colleagues watched the entire trial at work. Interesting. I think the OJ trial might've been bigger though. Uh, and thank you for the super sticker, New Beginning. Thank you so much. Yeah. Considering the fact that we didn't have social media during that time and that trial received as much attention as it did, makes you think.